Well, welcome back to the lab. For those who have subscribed to the channel, thank you, and I'm glad you guys are liking what I'm doing. Uh, on the bench today, we have another 577, slightly different from that 577 that we repaired in a previous video. Um, especially, you can tell the difference between the two screens. Um, I bought this 577 for this looping compensation capacitor. As we can see from that unit over there, this one has the standard CRT in it. So that one's got the option 10 CRT in it. And I now want to confirm, now that I've seen the standard CRT, that that's not a 576 tube. That may be a 576 tube squished into a D D2 but I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look at the tube number. On this one, we know we have a good looping compensation. This control's taking a whack. That's left. That's center. It's still bent that way. We got right, so that control's busted. There's a little bit of damage here where the kind of Paint's wearing off a little bit, or it might be dirty. Might have to clean it. Not 100% sure yet, but other than that, the unit looks like it's in pretty good shape. All the n There's a slight crack in this knob, but nothing too major. Um, everything else is in good shape, especially this knob. This is the important knob, so that's in good shape. So what I'm going to do now is I have it hooked up to power. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. The, the listing for this said there was no display so um haven't started it up yet haven't looked at anything so it just said there was no display so but they had it turned on in the listing so i know lamps were lighting up things like that so it has been plugged in recently so go ahead and turn it on we are drawing right at about 53 watts so five, six hundred-ish millivolts. We have some lamp activity here. I do have some lamp activity down here. You can't see it because the knobs coming over. Don't know what's going on yet with the tube, so we'll defocus that. We have it set to AC. Position controls are centered, zeroed. Normal display, normal filter, normal rep rate. These buttons are a little sticky. I'll have to clean those. That won't be that big a deal. 6.5 volts. Now oh, let's see. Uh, since the defeat switch isn't isn't busted, let's see if it'll turn off. Yeah, so when I switch to 100 volts, we have current right now is running at about 600 volts, or 600 milliamps, 55 watts still. So that's okay. These are reacting. That reacted. I'm hearing things switch around. So that's a, that's good. Okay, something just got hot. I smell electrolytic. Yeah, I definitely smell burning capacitor. So let me um, let me pop this open. I'm gonna do a visual check, a real good inspection of everything, and we will see. Ooh, that smells strong. Um, we'll see what we've got, but uh, we'll go from there. So let me reposition the camera. We'll pop the side panel off, and we'll take a look at inside. Okay, well, I've got the side of the case open. Everything on this side looks doesn't look too terrible. I've got some old electrolytics down there, uh, but nothing looks too god-awful. Nothing looks too bad in here. So I, I do smell a, a burning electrolyte. Uh, if you've ever blown a capacitor up, you there's a unique smell that you'll never forget. Oh! 
Well, that's interesting. I'm going to zoom in on that. This might be a later unit. Another YouTuber did uh, another repair on one of these, and this was a plastic connector, very similar to what it looks like. Very similar to what it looks like on this side. However, that, from what was originally in here, that's beefy. And that's an all metal. I'll have to see if there's a part number for that. I'd like to get a few more of those. And look at that. That's nice. A little rust on the shaft, but yeah, I might have to get a few more of those. That actually, that's really nice. Let me pop the panel off on the other side and we'll take a look and I'll also pull this power supply board out. We'll take a look at that. I have a sneaking suspicion we are going to have some power supply problems, but we'll see. All right, I'm doing a careful inspection on the other side of the board. Here's main power transformer. I'm not seeing anything that looks burnt up, exploded, smoked out. So I'm not seeing any obviously destroyed components. A couple of weird things is the legs on this transistor are really long. That's a little odd. Tech usually didn't put legs that long. These are slightly shorter. Those are slightly shorter. It's almost like they were replaced and not clipped off. The resistors look good. I don't see any discoloring on this side of the board. No scorch marks. So let me pull the power supply, see if we can't figure out what was uh, smelling like burning. Well, here's the main power supply board, and I immediately see what was roasted up. That right there is supposed to look like that right there. So he's, that's a bunch of carbon. He's dead. So I'll get a schematic and I'll find out exactly what he is and um, see if I need to order some. That might be a tantalum. Could be an electrolytic, could be a tantalum. I don't know yet. Ooh, smells really strong of burnt capacitor. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh yeah, that section of the power supply has been worked on. Up here, up top, you can't see it because of the caps, but there's flux residue and there's a lot of uh, components up here that look like they may be mildly toasted. So, for sure we got some work to do on that board. Hopefully the tube's good. Um, I don't even know if the tube's good, but I don't want to even think about powering this up anymore until I work on this power supply board. So I think that's where we're going to start and hope our tube's good. The good news is on this one, we should be able to see tubes are available for the 577s where they're not for the 576s. So should be able to source some parts, but let me get to cleaning, and I will bring you guys back when I have something interesting. All right, here's the power supply disassembled and on the bench. Curve tracers on its side. Curve tracers on its side. Power supply actually lays on the bench pretty good. So I've pulled out the exploded cap already. I will probably place it, replace this other one for good measure. Did a quick leakage test on one of the main filters in the 30 volt rail and they're failing. Um, it's showing leakage at 25 volts. So is toast. I had a suspicion it was going to be toast. Turns out to be proven. So what I'll do is while I'm in here I will replace this guy, this guy, that guy 
maybe these I'll have to maybe these four I'll have to see what I've got and go from there um, but I'll be ordering up some power supplies so this will be put on hold for just a little bit while I order some caps but that's where we're at uh, I got the switches cleaned so I'm just waiting for the alcohol to flash off but uh, yeah it turns out we have some problems in the power supply which I don't think shocks anybody given that it didn't start up and it smelled like burning well I gotta wait on the mailman so I will be back in the time warp okay I've got the power supply fixed and repaired I'm gonna fire this up see if it'll give us a trace uh, AC 6.5 volts very little current normal None, none. Display is normal. Normal. No filter. That's there. This is off. Okay. Intensity's down. Focus is down. Beam finders out. Set some random voltages and turn on the power supply. Okay, we have 200, 120 volts today. And we're drawing about 480 milliamps. Give it a bit to warm up. Let's see if we have any intensity. Uh, nothing yet. That's not a good sign. Oh, I don't have any collector current. Uh, that's still not really a good sign. Let me... Um, let me turn the lights off, see if this is just a tired tube. Okay. Here we are with the lights off. And let's see what we look like. I gotta be real careful because it's dark and I don't want to put my fingers inside the chassis with it running, so we'll slowly bring this up. Well, there's a spot. All right, so what we'll do is we will just roll this up. We have a spot. Uh, well, I don't like that. Let me uh, let me position this, and I'll show you what I just saw. Now this thing's got some. real problems. I'll have to look and see if that control's dirty or not. But if you take a look at the intensity of the spot, actually let me zoom in on that. We'll slowly turn this spot up. Right there. So as you can see, it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger, it's getting brighter. As you can see, it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and then it just falls off again. And then it starts getting brighter and brighter again. So it's right here where it's got the, where it doesn't continue to get bright. That is an extremely tired tube. The fact that I can't even see the spot in the in the um, I'll leave it in the camera. I'll turn the lights on. See if it, see if we can even see the spot with the camera. I haven't moved the camera or anything. I just turned the yeah the ambient light completely washes the spot out. So. 
This tube is toast. There is no saving that one. Um, let me see how the uh, see how the um, if the supply is working, and I'll see if the collector supply is working. And then that'll tell us if it's worth moving forward or not. I'll just see if it gives us some voltages and things like that. And uh, I'll see what I can do about getting us a tube. Okay, have a meter hooked up. So as I rotate this, we should see we do increasing voltage. This should run up to about 6.5, 6, 8. How's the 25 volt range look? Just over. How's the 100 volt range look? mad at me because of the warning. My defeat switch is, or my lid switch is actually kind of bad. Yep, there's 100 volts. Because you push it too hard, it's a secondary switch. Let's try 400. I'll bump it up to 1600. I can't roll this up 100% because the meter will blow up, but I will uh, I'll roll it to about 800 volts and see see what all we get. I am not going to touch the frame while I'm doing this. limiting. Well, the self-limiting is actually working. If this goes higher, I just gave it some more current. Oh yeah, look at that. Immediately 500 volts. Now there's 990 volts is 60%, so the collector supply is working very well. So, we'll see what we can do about getting some parts for it. And we will see if we can't make it work again. Obviously, since we got A spot, we have high voltage. 
um, cathode voltage on the back of the CRT. So, but the um, I believe it's a thorium coating on the cathode. It's been well used. This unit has seen a lot. I'm gonna turn this back down so I don't zap myself. This unit has seen a lot of a lot of use. Um, so, especially given the condition that it's in, I am not surprised. The previous owner did not get a trace on the screen because this tube is exhausted. So let me see what I can find, and then we'll jump back into it. Okay. So the Mauser delivery guy has dropped off. In this case, it was FedEx. Um, this is a calibration set of resistors for the 577s. I am still working on sourcing a tube, but I am optimistic we'll get this working again. So I got a couple of resistors. Some of them are really easy to find, like... 10k ohm at 0.1%. The spec wants it at a quarter percent tolerance. So you can get in metal film and things like that, you can get 0.1% pretty easy. So these are well above tolerance. So I don't even need to test those. There's a quarter tolerance exactly, 0.25. Um, 0.1% for one meg ohms. So they'll be in spec. 10 meg ohms, 1%. These will have to, uh, these will have to hand grade, possibly. These were kind of expensive. These 1 watt, 1k ohm, 0.1% resistors. These were on the expensive side for resistors. I think these were about seven bucks a piece. But what I wanted to talk about was these guys. Um, the curve tracers need some heavy current resistors, and they want them at quarter of a percent. So, I couldn't buy 1 ohm, 10 watt, quarter percent resistors. They, they didn't, yeah, these are the 1 ohm, 10 watt, quarter percent. They didn't, uh, actually make them. The best tolerance I could find was 1 percent, so I had to do some hand grading especially with measuring just one ohm. Um, I was using Kelvin clips in the lab, and I did end up, I, I, I needed to order 10, but 10 gave me two serviceable resistors at uh, well within spec. One of these, I think, is 1.000. Check this real quick. I have the meter turned on very slow. Yeah, this is... Oh, no, that's a, that's one of the 200s. Let's see. There's a 1 ohm. One point zero zero two two. Uh, to be within a quarter of a percent, it needs to be 1.0025. So this one makes it. One of the other... That's, the, that's a 200. That's a 1. Yeah, there we go. 1.0006. So there's my golden 1 ohm resistor. So to hand grade them, it's just a matter of I have a 10 samples, run them through the meter, see what the meter says, make sure the meter's warmed up, and take the ones that are closest to spot on and use those as my standards. So I got to grade the 10 meg ohm. And then everything should be good. We'll be just waiting on a tube. So if anything else interesting happens, I'll let you guys know and I'll be back.
Well, the good news is it looks like we found a donor heart. So I have a new CRT. I got it pulled out of its donor. I'm going to get it put into the 577. And we'll see if we can at least bring that portion of it back to life. Um, this particular 577 is turning out to be a mess. Um, I'm going to wipe down this tube, clean it up just a little bit, clean off the dust on the shield back here, get it all cleaned up, and then work on getting it installed in the new uh, in the in its new home. And then we'll fire it up together and see if we at least get a trace with decent intensity. All right, I have the uh, tube transplant done. Everything is all squared away there. Turn it on, don't expect anything to come on yet. Let's see what we have for brightness. I'm gonna stand back, because we just did a tube. This does have the implosion shield. I'll show you in a minute, but this implosion shield is disgusting. So I'll have to polish that up, clean that up, but it gives us power. And we're on, we're drawing about 400 milliamps. And there we go, we have something. All right, well, we have, let's see, what are we set to, 20 milliamps. Uh, step offset, that's not gonna do anything. Right, so we definitely need some adjustment. I also have the scope very defocused. Turn the intensity down. Okay. That is working. So when you turn the collector voltage off, it's dying down. So. That is showing us a diode. So we have a healthy tube, actually. That tube is just under a half for brightness. And I can really focus that tube in, so that is actually an extremely healthy tube. I'll probably buy a couple more of those, just so I can have some spares for this guy. Uh, we definitely have some dirty controls, cleaning, there's some stuff that's going to need adjustment, do a whole bunch of things, but uh, yeah, uh, we can now make progress. Our biggest issue was the tube, and that appears to be done, so sweet. Alright, we'll continue on working on the 177, see if we can't get this guy, bring this guy back to life. We are making progress. Okay, a bit of safety equipment for working on CRTs. They are a high vacuum tube, and there is an implosion risk where if the tube gets cracked, the glass will actually crush in on itself and then explode outwards, doing um, you not a bit of good. I use safety glasses and uh, gloves just to make sure when I'm handling the tube, if anything happens, should be fine, just take care, especially when handling these tubes. They are nothing to mess with and don't drop them. Okay, I've got everything put back together. Um, everything's looking pretty good. While I had the tube out, I noticed the implosion shield was really bad. So, next thing on the list is I'm gonna polish this implosion shield. This is a polycarbonate uh, blast shield, just in case the tube pops on the user, so all these should be installed in scope. Sometimes they're a different color. Um, in this case, it's normal, but all of these should be installed. Don't run them without them, because if the tube ever does go, um, it'll go in your face. So I'm gonna work on polishing this up, getting this all, getting all the scratches and everything taken out of this. Um, it's not cracked or anything, but, uh, and then we will go from here. The other thing I need to sort out since I have the camera out, is this is the 177 that came with it. Um, this right here is why that switch is so complicated to replace. 
because it switches everything. But there's a that resistor right there isn't on any of the schematics. And I noticed this one says ground mod. Somebody's added a sticker and a modification to this one, so I'm going to get that out of there. The other thing that I've seen is the current, the 22 ohm current sense resistors, these guys right here. Tilt that so you guys can see it. These guys right here, there's a few of them. These have seen some current, they're burnt in half. So I got a couple of those to replace. So I will get some parts ordered. I don't have any 22 ohm resistors. And through the magic of the camera, three days will pass for in 10 seconds for you guys, but I'll have to wait for the mail. So everything on that looks okay for now. Still not sure what I'm going to do about this front switch. See if I can figure that out. I either need a new capacitor for the 177 that I have over there, or I need a new switch for this guy. There's two different types of DC looping capacitors in here. One has a terminal that screws on the front underneath a switch. The other one has two screws. This is the two screws. My other one is the terminal. So I'm still trying to sort that out one that one out, but uh, everything is progressing well. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I, had, I cleaned up this knob as best as I could. This was really, really chunky. You can see this at the top. This is actually on the bottom of the knob where the paint is. Something chemically attacked this plastic, so that I won't be able to do anything about, but... Um, I, did, I was able to get a lot of the boulders off, and the knob looks infinitely better now since I polished it than before. There's all kinds of scratches and everything in it, so it looks really good. That's where I'm at at the moment on this uh, D2. So everything is progressing slowly, but it is we are moving forward. So when I have something else interesting, I will let you guys know. Okay, I have the, everything's all set, I've rebuilt the power supply, I have replaced some caps in the collector power supply board, I'll show that in a second. We've got the meters, I've got the meters up top, this is plus 30, minus 30, 250. Minus 12, plus 12. And the way all those are hooked up is... Right here. So I have a probe going to each of the test points. There's a common ground that's back there. All the black is the common ground. Everything's good, and everything's hooked up to the supply, so I am actually ready to fire this up and let the power supply burn in for a little bit. So what I will do is I will position the camera. I've actually got the intensity down, so nothing should happen to the device. So I'll actually focus in on the meters so you guys can see what I'm seeing. So let me get everything repositioned, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. First power up after... Rebuilding the supply and hooking up all the meters. No smoke. Drawing about half an amp. I will have to see exactly what the um, spec is on the 225 volt supply because we are we're low about 20 volts on that. But everything else looks very healthy. Uh, let me get you refocused on the screen. Let's see how our tube looks. All right, here we are on the screen. All right, I have some intensity. Let's get some trace. Okay, I have some problems. I still have some problems in the 177. That's why I'm not getting a... That's why I'm not getting a nice line. That's okay. This 177 was an absolute disaster. It was a mess. 
I have lost the left hand side of the screen. I'll have to dig into that, see what's going on there. I have motion, but I may have a, it's almost like one of the plates isn't working. Yeah, I can't get it to go past there. Okay, well, power supply looks good. I'm going to let it run. Turn the tube off so we don't burn it out. I will let it run, and then we will take a look at the horizontal amplifier and see what is going on there, because I may have lost the left side. So, But no smoke. Everything seems to be holding. Uh, so that all looks good. So we will let it go. Okay, so after looking at the board, I found out I had a loose connector that was on the collector supply board, so it is now functioning. And if I kick this over to DC, I am getting DC voltages on the meter on the Keithley, so everything is good. Everything up top looks okay. May have one more leaky cap in the power supply, but I'm going to let that burn in for a little while. Just let it run. Feed all the new capacitors. Make sure nothing's going to burn off. I'll check. I'll run it up on all the voltages. Make sure nothing smokes out. Actually, we can do that. We'll just do... There we go. Here's 25, all the way up, everything looks good. One hundred, nothing's burning out, four hundred, everything looks okay. 1600 everything looks okay none of the caps have burned out none of the caps are blowing up so all looks g good and healthy so I'm gonna just let that run for a little while and uh, see where we end up on voltages now this thing got a lot of parts replaced this is going to need a complete calibration when i'm done so getting close to having it electrically restored but i still need to go through and calibrate it but it's it's looking good at the moment so i like it so i'll let it burn down just make sure we don't have any uh faults in the power supply, nothing overheats with time and decides to smoke off. I'll keep an eye on the voltages. Obviously, with this thing being open, we will have to keep a close eye on the lab cat. Yeah, we're making lots of progress from what the unit was when we started. Well, through the magic of the camera, I will see you guys in about three hours. Okay, well, some more interesting things happened. Um, I was in the middle of the calibration, got to the vertical amplifier gain adjustment and there was super there was hardly any adjustment at all everything was acting really weird i had to start digging into this section of the board right here so what i ended up doing was pulling one leg of all these resistors and testing them to make sure they were in tolerance for the most part they are they're floating around a little bit um i did find out the two driver transistors which i have sitting over here they are really bad. They're supposed to be a matched pair. One's got an HFE of 170-something. The other one's got an HFE of 70-something. So they're really bad. So got those swapped out with some new driver transistors. Still had problems. Thought the control might be bad, so I pulled it off to check it. That checked okay. And then I found this resistor right here. This little resistor right here is supposed to be 15 ohms at 1% tolerance. If I test it with the meter, and I have a leg pulled, so I'm doing a true test. So if I check it, 715 ohms. So this is way out of spec. 
So that's where all my current was going and why I couldn't balance the stage. Since I got all these pulled off and it won't be too big, too big of a job, everything's here and there's some corrosion on this board, I'm going to probably replace all of these resistors with uh, new modern equivalents. So I'll rework this board and then we will be back, but we're making progress. Um, I do not have any 15 ohm resistors, so I'm gonna have to order some. So again, I'll have to wait on the mail, but into the calibration, power supplies are fine. Everything's good. I will fire up the other curve tracer when I'm done with this, and I will show you guys the disparity in those two, or the uh, differences in those two transistors. Uh, it's it's pretty bad. So everything is working well. Obviously, I have to clean this up, get these le get those legs trimmed up, and everything. But uh, we will keep on working and see what we can't get fixed. So once again, I have to order some parts, but when they come in, I'll get them in, and then I will be back. Okay, well, we have, uh, I have finished up the calibration on this. This, this one was entertaining. Uh, I got a lot to go through with the um, carnage that happened on this one. This is my known working 177. Turns out the 177 that was with this has some other fatal issues with it. I think some of the op amp ICs are dead. I have to dig into that a lot more. There's even more damage to it than I thought. But I did manage to get everything calibrated. Uh, I got stuck on step f 15 because of this 177 being bad. So this is the my known good. This is my known good 177. So uh, to show that it works. I have a 140 volt Zener diode. We have a 20 volts per collector, collector set to 400. Back this down so we don't blow up the diode. But I will start cranking this up. Give it some intensity too. So, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 volts, 20, 40, and any time there it goes. Right after 140 volts, the Zener kicks in. So that is working. Back this back down. Let me get set up for the next test. Some of the carnage is right here. These are the two um, power amplifiers for the tube. Uh, we'll use the 577 to uh, test how bad these really were. Uh, we will do... Let's see what that does. That gives us a nice curve. Actually, we know these transistors are 200 volt transistors, so we can just hammer them. All right, let me set this to fast. Hey, that shows up better in the camera. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll match this, this line right here with the center graticule. So I'll go to aiding and we'll bump that up to the middle line so that it crosses right at the center point. So the reference point we're using is the center point right here. 
I'm going to flip over onto the other transistor and the one, two, three, fourth line up. We'll see how it goes. Well, that shows you how bad the matching is. Let me readjust that real quick. This is the one with the more gain with more gain. So we'll drop the gain down. We will reset up the aiding. Okay, so we're at the top line. So we use the very top line as the reference point, so center of the screen. There's the left side, right side, left side, right side. So those two transistors were very poorly matched. So I had to get something better for those. Let me find those other two here real quick. Okay, so I'm using the same settings. I have the two driver transistors. So the way these work in circuit, see if I can get him to stand up. Of course not. Um, these have all the gain, or these guys have all the gain. This has all the power. So to get the gain out of the circuit, you actually use them in pairs. So one of these drives one of the power transistors because the main difference between amplification transistors and power transistors is the power transistors, you have voltage isolation and control for days, but very, very little gain. These guys can't handle a lot of voltage, but they have a lot of gain is the main difference. So these drive the power stages, which then drive the plates of the tube which then display the image on the on the screen. So we back the voltage down a little bit. We will give it less current and let's see what this does. Survey says that's a nice set of curves. So we'll do the same drill. Uh, aiding to we'll just back off the steps to that line, so we'll go to the top line, and there's the right side. So, exact same setup, just testing the other transistor. Gain on this one's way lower than the other one. So, there's the left hand side, right hand side. So, the matching on the Amplification transistors was pretty bad as well. So let me get the um, parts dish, and we'll just go through the go through the carnage as to what was faulted out in this unit. But the main frame is now working and in calibration. The 177, this 177 still needs to be worked on. This is my known good one, so this one's actually working. So let me get the um, carnage together, and then I will, uh, I'll be right back. And here are the dead parts. Everything in this dish got replaced. The tube was bad. The 177 was bad. There was lots of resistors that were bad in here. This, I still have to deal with this switch. This knob was chemically destroyed. I did get the top of this knob polished, but the bottom of it is still in pretty rough shape. Um, so these guys are just power filtering capacitors, nothing new. Um, so those guys were dead. This guy, unfortunately, he wasn't faulted, but he was my fault. I uh, melted the side of this cap with a soldering iron while I was getting this guy out. These were really close in proximity and he got a little too warm so I had to replace him. Uh, we have current sense resistors from inside the current sense resistors from inside the 171. 
those have seen better days. This was the same resistor. It actually got burnt in half. This was that ground mod that somebody put in that got burnt up. Um, this was one of the main problems in the power supply. This is one of the electrolytics in one of the supply rails. Uh, the low voltage, I think this is the 12, this was in the 12 volt rail, but it was burnt in half. This is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, the driver transistors for the vertical, the horizontal was okay, the vertical was the problem. Some lamps, I did an LED mod on this one, so I did an LED mod on this one, so I've replaced these lamps. Um, this guy, I lost a day and a half to him. There's a uh, U570. It's an op amp in the vertical section where the vertical was acting very weird. I have no idea what this part is. It should not have been in the U570 socket. So he's out of there. I got another uh, op amp coming. I stole one from another piece of gear just for testing purposes. Um, but that was definitely not where it should have been. So he was gone. The driver transistors for the vertical section, which we know are completely toasted. Um, and just another lamp. So some filter caps. This guy was my fault from the burn mark. Current sense resistors and a lot of calibration. Um, one of the reasons I spent so much time on this unit was this is one of the very early serial numbers. So I'm dating this one probably around 73 to 75-ish. Um, so well worth saving. Uh, the other big, and got lucky with, the other big one is the CRT was bad and needed to be replaced. So it was replaced. I now have to render that CRT safe um, before I get rid of it and dispose of it properly. Let me know if you guys want to see the electron guns in the CRT. I will see if I can get them extracted there in here, actually. The gun itself is in here, this section of the CRT. Um, there should be a way to get that out, especially with that being a bad CRT. So if that's something you guys want to see, let me know. But all in all, a 576 with a standard standard tube as opposed to the 576 with the mod 10 tube uh, this is a much newer unit uh, this was very late in the production run this guy was actually very early in the production run so to be perfectly honest it is in an, it is in incredible shape for being as old as it is uh, all the controls are good the knobs aren't cracked or anything like that so it's in it's in very very good shape for its age um, so, very happy with that. Uh, I definitely like the position controls on the later unit. The way the uh, magnifier is done is much nicer on the, on the later model than the original model. On the later model, there's two. There's a fine and a coarse adjustment. On this one, you pull this out, and it amplifies the knob. It's an, it's an extremely touchy control when it's in magnification. Um, but other than that, it works. So, um, all good. Everything works on that. Everything checks out okay. So, I'm going to wrap this one up and see what the next project is. Well, thanks for stopping by the lab and checking out the random stuff that comes across my workbench. We will continue to fix things. If it's something you guys want to see, stick around. There'll be a lot of, uh, repairs and restorations in the future and we'll see what kind of trouble we can get get into and what kind of interesting gear we can get repaired let me know how we're doing and leave a comment i do read all the comments and i will see you guys in the next video take care